you're live. Hi, welcome to Painting Together with Acrylics. I'm Gigi Chen, and this is my home studio in New York City. So I am very excited. I have been looking forward to this class since we started planning it. Uh, this week, we are going to use a limited palette and learn how to paint a jellyfish. I am entranced by these little sea creatures, and I love it. We're only going to be using about four colors, and really, honestly, we're really only using three colors for this. So if you guys can look down in the, in the description down below, you can see a link to where you can download our reference picture as well as all the colors we'll be using, but we are also going to go through that right now together. Okay, so here we go. Ah, look at this. Look at this really lovely limited palette we're using. Uh, we are going to be, uh, let me take out like my nice big brush. You know, we're going to start off with a nice big brush, but here, uh, this is the example that I have, and I'm going to switch that out, and we're going to paint this together freehand, okay? So um, right here I have white, ultramarine, some Payne's Gray, and some black. So I have uh, this Payne's Gray, but you, in fact, if you don't have Payne's Gray, you don't need it. Because really, you can mix the blue and the black and make a Payne's Gray. Uh, so really, any kind of blue you want, and black and the white, and we're just gonna mix and match all this together and make everything as we go. So I also have here a wet palette. So this wet palette will keep your paint pretty uh, wet throughout, for, actually, It'll keep it pretty wet for a while as long as you put a cover on it so there's gonna be a video below on how to make a wet palette if you don't have one but if you don't it's fine if you have palette paper that totally works just fine so uh, and I have a piece of wood here that I like to work on but if you don't have wood you can use a canvas some uh, tough mixed-media paper and and really any variety of brushes but I'm gonna go through my brushes as we go along and I really want to emphasize the fact that I'm using I'm using Utrecht uh, brand paint, but it doesn't really matter what kind of paint you use. Like you can use craft paint, you can also use craft brushes. I don't want that to be a hindrance for how you take my class. So how about we get going? So I'm going to take this uh, big brush and also guys have a rag with you. That's really important and some water. So every time in between the times you're using uh, your brush, you're going to put in your water and you're going to make sure it stays wet because acrylic paint dries really fast. And also, I have um, this, you know, this acrylic open. So uh, this is a medium. I use it in matte. You could all, it also comes in glossy. It really doesn't matter if you have this. It would be nice if you had this, but if you don't and you're just kind of dropping it on the class, a little bit of water can replace it. And I'll just keep emphasizing that during the class. But I'm going to put that, put a little bit of right here. So. Um, so you see on the side of the screen is the reference, but remember you could also download it. Uh, let me just change this and make this a little bit brighter. If not. Okay, so hi, where's everybody from today? My friend Suzanne is here. Hi Suzanne. Hello Elizabeth. Hello. Hello friend all PA. Hello Pennsylvania. I love it. I love it. How many of you guys are actually sitting to work with me today? And how many of you guys are just hanging out? So here I am, starting with the big brush. I'm going to take some water. I'm just going to wet that a little bit, and we're just going to freehand it together. I'm going to take some black paint and a little bit of the blue, and we're just going to create a dark ground together. I'm also going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. Remember, if you don't have Payne's Gray, you can mix your blue and your black and make Payne's Gray. So here I am, just going to put a ground down. You don't have to use too much water because I want it to dry. Oh, hello, Lisa, just hanging out. I love that. Oh, and my friend from Annapolis. Hello, Gay. My friend Gay is here. She's from Annapolis. She's also an amazing artist. I love it. My friend Darren. Hello, Darren. Oh, I love it. I love it when my friends drop in, and I love it when new people drop in. Oh, I love it. Oh, my friend Suzanne is watching it while she's she's uh, using her spin bike. Yes, this is a great thing to watch while you're exercising because we should all maybe think about exercising at some point, but not sure. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just sort of going back and forth and using a little bit of the blue, using a little bit of the blue also. And I'm just sort of going back and forth, just blending them in together. And maybe we'll do this a couple of times. Okay, 
I'm going to take a little bit of my water and just sort of go over this. And while we're doing this, how many of you guys, for you, this is your first time painting? And also, what is your experience with paint, with acrylic paint? Like, if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any technical questions while I'm painting, please put it in capital letters so I can see it better. Otherwise, you guys can just kind of hang out and talk to each other. Oh, hello. Hello, 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 Tracy Foster from LA. Or is that Louisiana? Which one is that? <laughs> I've been to LA, I've never been to Louisiana. Okay. So I was actually kind of curious, how many of you guys sit and do my class live and how many of you guys watch and then do it later? Oh, and there's my friend Glenn. Hi, Glenn. My friend Glenn is down there as my studio partner and he's an amazing artist. So I'm just going back and forth, picking up some blue, picking up some black, picking up some Payne's gray and just putting down a ground. And then we're gonna take a second and let that kind of settle and dry a little bit. And I'm gonna hang out and talk to you guys. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't see the link for the palette video. Um, I guess you guys, I think they can put that up for you. But if not, like, a, so I can t tell you real quick, um, if you guys don't find the palette video, the wet palette video is actually can shows you how to make a wet palette. So a wet palette is generally made up of a cellulose sponge, which is super cheap. You can get like a pack for a dollar and you, and then you have to have a container. So I just have like this big wide container. I bought this actually, um, from a store because they're, you know, it's a wet palette, but to make one, you need perhaps a piece of, um, so you need cellulose sponge, a container, and you need uh, some parchment paper. So I'm using this because it just looks better, but generally I use parchment paper because it's a lot cheaper, you know, but for visually, this is a lot nicer. So I use, uh, so that's actually all you need, right? And then you wet the sponge, you place the paper over it, and you just put your water on it and make sure when you make a wet palette, you get something with a top. So when you close it, the paint will stay wet actually for like a couple of weeks, you know? And some colors take a little longer to dry, like white will take a lot longer to dry. But generally, if you want to save money, it's a really great way. And the way I teach you in that video really only costs a few dollars, you know? Um, and it'll save you a lot of money in the long run if you, instead of buying like a commercially like made like wet palette set. Okay, so this is pretty dry dry-ish. I'm going to go over it with another coat. I'm just going to go over it with another coat really quick. And I'm not using any medium. I'm just using a little bit of water, tiny little bit of water just to move this paint. And I am just going to go. So basically we're kind of making a bluish black ground, which is almost kind of like a Payne's gray. And I don't know if you need to really keep it super even. It doesn't really matter if it's that even. Like you don't have to have a flat, super flat surface. So you can see, even in the video, you can see some patches of blue. And I'm just going to go over things. And my paint's a little wet. And remember guys, you can watch this video again later if you are painting along and, and I'm going a little bit too fast. Here we go. And that will make everything just gonna take a little bit of water to move this a little bit. I love it. This is gonna be this is gonna be such a fun one. So when I first made the example a few weeks ago, I was super stoked because I was looking for something that had a limited palette and something that I think that you guys would all have a really really fun time making. And honestly, I had a super fun time making the example because like who doesn't love jellyfish? You know, like I used to love going to the aquarium and I still do. I still go to the aquarium. I go hang out with the kids at the aquarium, you know, and I used to love watching the, the penguins in the tank and the jellyfish. Um, I live in New York City and we have, uh, we have a bunch of zoos. We have a lot of zoos. I think a zoo in almost every borough and we have an amazing aquarium out in Coney Island um, where they have... Uh, you know, the Ferris wheel and roller coasters and and they have this gorgeous aquarium with amazing shark tank and the most amazing jellyfish. So that was always my favorite thing. So when I was a kid, I used to go there and look at the fish and draw the jellyfish. And this, uh, the example was the first time I ever painted a jellyfish. So that was pretty cool. Okay, so I'm running out of paint. Um, 
Do you worry about leaving brush strokes? No, I don't worry about leaving brush strokes too much. Um, I would say really just don't use a lot of paint. And um, when you do, honestly, it kind of dries a little bit flat. And also we're gonna paint over this. I actually like brush strokes. It's a painting, it's not a photograph. Um, I really wanna, I don't want it to feel like today we're reproducing a photograph. We're like, we're obviously using a reference, but I want this, I mean, it's a painting. Let's, let's have our brush strokes, you know, even if we're painting the ground. Also, it's a bit early to worry about paint strokes right now. Let's just kind of hang out and let it like get, get set a little bit. Um, and also I don't want you guys to worry about what brand of brushes I use. I'll show you as we go. But I want you guys to feel comfortable, say, if you have a $10 pack of craft brushes from a craft store. Like, totally be okay with that. If you guys have, like, craft paint from a craft store, also okay. I wanted to set up this class and all of my other classes to feel like you guys can, can do it together with me. So, let's wait for that to set. And I'm going to look for a proper paintbrush for the next part. Um, and I don't mind starting to work it wet because the, it doesn't really matter if it's, I start off with the painting kind of wet, just because we're only going to be doing a, uh, first layer for this. So I'm going to take a, hmm, choosing brushes is always such a dilemma because I want to use all of my brushes. I'm going to take a, a slightly pointy brush and I'm just going to start drawing. How about that? So we're going to do this by eye. Okay, so please take a look at your reference and also the reference is on the screen as well. So I'm going to take my brush, make it a little bit wet, and I'm going to take a little bit of this ultramarine and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to think about where, I'm going to think about I want the top of my jellyfish here. So I'm going to put a dot. And I want the width of my jellyfish here. And then I want the other side of the width over, maybe over here. Not quite, you know, not that quite far. Or maybe just put it, I can move it over just because it's gonna get off the screen. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit of black to cover that over. Okay, so that is gonna be the width, all right? And I'm gonna take that and just and decide that this is going to be the bottom of it. Okay, or maybe, maybe we change it. And remember, everything we do, we can paint over. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it too much. Okay, so how about we create a little bit of a dome. Watch me. I'm gonna go this way. And then I'm going to, it's not exactly a dome. We're not going this way. I'm sort of going, I'm following the shape of the jellyfish. So it's not a full dome, but we're going to go this way and then I'm going to bend down and then go this way. How about that? So it kind of looks like a turtle shell right now, maybe the top of a car, a round car. <laughs> That's not a good comparison. Um, and then I'm going to create the side. I'm going to brush the side. So it's like a little C on the side, go this way, on the other side. And then we're going to, I'm going to go like this to kind of demarcate where the, the folds of the jellyfish head's going to be. I don't know that much about the anatomy of jellyfish. So if you guys know any fun facts about jellyfish, please let me know. I just know how to paint them. And really, even that is new for me. Okay, so we are doing, there we go. So that's the top. It kind of looks like a cloud. Right, it kind of looks like a cloud. We're not gonna worry about the tentacles quite yet. Not quite yet. I wanna think about uh, laying in really quickly. I'm gonna take this brush and just sort of lay in. I'm gonna take a flatter brush. I'm gonna move that. And you guys can use whatever brushes you feel comfortable with. I'm just trying to switch out my brushes so it goes a little quicker. But I have a flat brush and I'm going to take my water and take this blue, take the ultramarine and fill it in. I'm gonna fill this in. So if you guys have ever taken my class before, 
and I'm sh I know that for sure some of you guys have taken my class before. I like to emphasize the idea that you have to layer your paint in order to get it to be really, the painting to be really beautiful. So meaning we're not doing this all at once. So at some, at, I mean, for the first, I'd say the first hour, your painting is gonna look crazy and not amazing. <laughs> and I, so I, I don't want you to feel intimidated by the fact that your painting looks nuts because honestly, my painting is gonna look nuts for a while. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna add a little bit of white, a tiny little bit of white to my ultramarine. And I'm gonna fill this in a little bit more now. And I'm just gonna fill it in pretty flatly for the most part. I have a little bit of white also that's in it. And I'm just going to fill this part in. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna block in the tentacles. Oh, that's pretty nice. So it's looking a little bit, so I want, I want you guys to learn how to make this look translucent. That's why we're making a really pretty underpainting first. So an underpainting is the first layer that we do with the painting. And then after that, we just sort of do one layer at a time. And I think that patience, patience is incredibly important. Like honestly, it's gonna look crazy for a little while. Oh, hello, Luis, how are you? Okay, okay, there we go, that's laid in. I'm gonna now take, so I have this like flat brush. You guys can have any sort of flat brush and that will be fine. Um, let's see, and then I'm going to kind of look at this. And so the tentacles kind of go like this, right? But we're basically just gonna lay in the underpainting for this first. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my paint, to my ultramarine. And add a little bit of water just to kind of move it. And then I'm going to, from the middle, I'm just gonna start to, actually I need a little bit more ultramarine, just a little bit more. Maybe take a little bit of Payne's Gray into that. And I'm just gonna start to demarcate where I'm eventually going to make my, there we go. I'm gonna add a little bit. So, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to the way I'm using the paint. I'm mostly going into the ultramarine with a little bit of white. Okay, so here we go. Hello, Dina, my friend Dina's here. A lot of my friends are here today. It's kind of exciting. Let's see. And I think some of them are painting with me, right? Are you guys painting with me? And let's see, here we go. So we're just sort of demarcating. This is just the underpainting. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that. And then we're just gonna keep adding layers to this together. Like, it, this painting is surprisingly efficient. Uh, <laughs> and because it's only a few colors, it is, makes it pretty efficient. So as I said, if you guys don't have Payne's Gray, it's okay. Payne's Gray is mostly just blue and black. Okay. Hello, Elizabeth, good to see you again. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our next layer. Um, I'm going to, I'm gonna switch my brush out. I don't know, I don't wanna, I feel like I don't wanna make you guys use that many brushes. But I'm gonna go into the next layer of this. Uh, I'm gonna take the ultramarine and add more white, even more white and we're gonna start to lighten everything. So I really like to work, when I paint, I like to work from dark to light. That's why we painted this ground first, and that's why we're about, to, we're gonna start to gradually make this a lot brighter. Okay, and so here we go. We're just gonna start, I think the painting, my paint is still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'm going to just start as I said, the first few layers of this painting is gonna look crazy. It's not gonna look like anything. So don't, do not be intimidated if it doesn't look amazing right now because my painting looks crazy also. And I just dropped my brush and got that there. I'll fix that later. Okay, so if you look at the, the reference picture, it goes from, it's like very light on top and then there's like kind of like a dark, a dark shadow and then it gets light again. So. I'm just going to 
just going to shade that in. And uh, for those of you guys coming in a little bit later, just dropping in, my I have reference picture for this uh, that's on the side, but also if you want to get the actual photograph to look at a little bit closer, you can download it down in the uh, episode description. Okay, so this is getting kind of it's a little bit wet. I'm going to add a little bit of water and just move this a little bit. So we're going to do this layer by layer together. So even though we're only using a few colors, we're still going to go layer by layer. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to do this to demarcate where the dark light's going to be. So my paint's going to kind of wet, but that's okay. We're going to work on a different part of this painting because I want to jump around, you know, because no matter what, I don't want to be too stuck on one paint, one part of this painting. Because especially if my paint's kind of wet. I'm gonna use a little bit of medium to move my paint. And if you don't have medium, you can use a little bit of water and that'll move it a little bit. So I'm gonna do these little ridges on the side. Okay, you see how already it's uh, coming coming together? Like very quickly, it's starting to look like something. Kind of looks like a little space alien. Okay, and then we're gonna do this little ridge. I mean, we're lucky that acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, but even then, sometimes it never dries quickly enough. And I'm going to add a little ridge here. I'm gonna take get back some more white, and there we go. A little bit of medium. And for those of you guys who don't know, medium is amazing. It sort of adds a little bit without, it adds a little bit to the paint and moves it a bit more without really diluting it. See, water can dilute the paint. It can help it move, but medium sort of is like, a, has a good binder where you don't, you're basically just adding more body to the paint and not taking away its colors. There we go. So I'm gonna do that, a little C there. And I'm going to let that settle because it looks crazy. And we're going to I'll let that kind of sit. I'm going to switch my brush because this brush is too big. I'm going to switch to a smaller flat brush. Okay. So as I said, it doesn't really matter what kind, what brand you're using, but I'm using like a flat, like it's pretty small. So this is about the size of my, you know, it's smaller than the size of my finger. And I'm going to go take a little bit more of this ultramarine, mix it with white, which is basically all we're really doing, right? Doing ultramarine and mixing it with white. Okay, so I'm going to do this little outline. Sometimes switching out your brush can really help. Like already this, this paint, this brush takes up, takes on paint a little bit better than my other brush. So I'm going to take this ultramarine and just mix it with a tiny, tiny bit of white, white and not a lot. And I'm going to start to demarcate where the tentacles are going to be. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go, see this is where the outlines of my, right, you can see my outlines there. So this is not, as I said, this is not going to be photorealistic, but I want to just try to capture the movement of this by using, and um, you can see this kind of looks like a little curtain here, and it kind of goes like zigzag, zigzag. So let's do that a little bit together. So I have a little, little brush, and I'm gonna go like this. Go like that. And there we go. There. And that's the next layer. So I'm going to pick out another area. I think we're going to, okay, so I'm just going to start to repaint over some of this. And I'm gonna leave some parts dark. You know, like I'm not, I'm just going to, I think I'm going to leave a lot of this dark 
and I'm going to just start to paint this like a little curtain. And we're going to do this in a zigzag and then some, so this is a great time to just look at the reference and see that some parts are going to be lighter because they overlap because a jellyfish is translucent. Okay, I'm going to go and remix this a little bit. I never mix enough paint. A little bit more white. And I'm going to just, I'm still just laying it in. So it really doesn't look amazing right now. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of medium to move this paint and go back into the ultramarine and a little bit of white. And here we go. I'm just going to do that. Little swiggles. And we're not going to do all of them. Like I, I really want to keep some of it. And I'm just going to brush a little bit so it, this is not all black. Okay. And here we go. So here's another underpainting, right? This is another bit of the underpainting. And we haven't, we're, we're not going to get into these quite yet, but I want to start painting, working more back on the, the top. And I'm just going to do a little bit more here. Okay, so I'm using, I'm still going to continue using this flat brush and I'm going to clean it a little bit. And I'm going to take the ultramarine, mix it in with the white, a little bit more white. And we're going to start building up this part together. Okay, so now getting even lighter. So whatever amount of white you have put in to begin with, we're going to put in even more. So it's already getting really pretty. And you know, someone's asking me about like brush marks, but like with this part, it's really nice. Like if you have um, areas where you have a lot of paint and areas where you have dry brush, it's really, really pretty. Um, and if anybody has any questions about that, like just let me know. Like definitely ask me any questions if you guys kind of get lost at some point. Let's see, how many of you guys have done a lot of acrylic and so many of you, how many of you guys are completely new to this? Like I want to know how many of you guys are newbies to acrylic paint. Okay. I'm just going to... So what I'm going to do is as I'm doing this, I'm choosing as I'm lightening, what parts to lighten. We're not going to lighten the whole thing. We're going to leave some parts. I might leave, because there's going to be a little bit of a dark strip here. I want to leave that. Okay. And I'm using a little bit of water to move my paint, dilute it a little bit. And go. I'm just kind of going over some of this. Okay, I'm just going to go this way because I want to keep the shape. So you'll see as I paint, I like to keep the volume. So I'm basically painting in a curve for the most part. Oh, you painted jellyfish a couple of years ago. That's really exciting. How did it go? And what did you use? Did you use watercolors or acrylics? I'm going to add a little bit more white into that. And I'm going to go even further into that while this is all still wet. And some of it I want to keep, I want to keep it some, some of it kind of rough too. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of medium. Okay. And already this is getting a little bit. I kind of like to keep this little edge blue. So that's kind of pretty. I'm going to take a little bit more of this white and just kind of go through it. And I have a little bit of medium. So for any of you guys who have never used medium before, it's kind of a fun, fun thing. And I can tell you guys a little bit more about it too as we, we go along and I use it more. Um, medium gives the paint a little bit of more body and you can kind of move it around. And it also keeps it from drying as fast, you know, because it's a pretty good uh, acrylic dries fairly quickly depending on the color and it really helps to have a little bit of uh, a little something to keep it like moist rather than just water 
because the water will evaporate and the medium can kind of keep it long dry like wet just a little bit longer um let's see oh <laughs> trisha was saying how she's uh done quite a few but most of them didn't turn out <laughs> but how is this one turning out for you trisha <laughs> i hope this one turns out a little bit better <laughs> oh and my friend my friend who's there zippity do she says that she's done it with spray paint i don't know i've never really used spray paint before are you guys good at spray painting i feel like i've just never i've never picked it up because like some of it like you know there's a lot of uh chemicals you know and i don't always like to use a lot of stuff with tons of chemicals that are spraying into the air <laughs> um is it better to let each layer dry completely before adding more paint sometimes um right now my paint if your paint is really 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 wet you might want to try uh, letting it dry a little bit. And if there's like a ton, a ton of paint, I would say getting another flat brush that is dry, has no paint on it, and just sort of like um, softening it a little bit to get the paint kind of going a little, you know, to kind of get the paint um, to dry a little faster and also to kind of soften your edges. But otherwise you can wait for it to dry. But I'm actually working on this, um, some of it, some of it is still actually, actually, this is all, this is all dry. Um, I would say that if your acrylic paint isn't drying really fast, you can kind of wait if you feel like it's sort of hindering the way you're doing it. Um, oh, hi, Tr okay, Trisha says she's just watching it now. So, okay, good. I hope you get to do it later. I hope I get to see it. Oh, so also guys, um, on our landing page, you can post your pictures for each episode so I can see them because I really love to see what you guys do. It makes me really, really happy, actually. Um, and some of you guys actually reached out to me in social media and show, and sent me images because I know some not everybody really wants to uh, show what they do like publicly and that's totally cool if you're feeling a little shy about it. Um, so it's kind of, it's pretty easy to find me if you go to Instagram, it's just my name, it's ggchen.art and that's my Instagram and you can private message me your pictures. I know that not everybody likes to publicly post what they do, especially if they're pretty new at it, but I love to see what you guys are doing. And a few guys have actually reached out to me and it's been really amazing actually. Because you know, I basically sit in a room by myself doing this show and I'm talking to you guys on YouTube, but uh, it's really, really nice when I get to have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one, like messaging with you guys and that's super nice actually. But also, I really mostly want to see what you guys do. And if you do post on the forum, it would make me really happy because then I get to see and then you guys can share and talk to each other. You know, I really want this to be a bit of like a little painting community. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of medium and brush this way, emphasizing that it's like fairly round. And oh, some of you guys, oh, Felicia says she's somewhat new. Let's see, is it better to let, let's see, and what else? Yeah, please, please share. That's a link there that they put up. Please share what you do. And for those of you guys who haven't posted for the other ones, I think you can post for all the, actually all the episodes. And I would love to see what you guys do. I don't know how many of you guys are actually have sat through more than one of these, actually. Like this is our fifth week. I'm gonna take a little bit of this ultramarine. Like this is our fifth class. And I kind of, so basically we have four classes before us and then we have a few more ahead, but I would love to see what you guys have done. And for those of you guys where it's your first time dropping in and you guys are painting, you guys can see this show after it live streams. And also you can see our previous four episodes that you can find on YouTube or our artist website page. Okay. So. I've basically been laying this all in a little bit at a time. Basically, I've been using the same color, which is just the ultramarine and white. And I'm just still layering. I think the way I layer is like I do a little bit at a time. So I don't use that much paint, actually. I mean, I, I really don't. I sort of make this, make this batch and I make very small batches. And then I do a little bit at a time. And then as I run out of paint, obviously, I put more, ba more back, but I don't want you guys to think that like glopping on the paint is going to be advantageous. You know, it's not. So a little bit at a time. I'm going to take a little of this ultramarine and emphasize this part being a little darker. 
Okay, so it's already starting to look a little bit better. And I'm going to leave this part alone for now. I'm gonna go back to it because I wanna work on the rest. I'm still using this small flat brush and I'm gonna take some ultramarine, add some white, and go about doing this and mixing the paint. And I'm going to just keep adding a little bit more light and I take a little bit of medium and a little bit more of this ultramarine. So I'm thinking about that being, here's a little bit of a tentacle there. Okay. I'm not using too much paint and I'm just going to start to emphasize some parts here. So there's really kind of no wrong way to do this because you know we're not we're not doing anatomy of a jellyfish. We're sort of doing like a um, very sort of like an impression of one practically. Okay. Hi Chris, nice to see you again. Are you oh you're painting along? I can't wait. I love it. I want to see what you do afterwards too, Chris. Okay, so I'm still doing, so right here, I'm going to take this and just go a little bit like that. Okay, so a little zigzag, and then I'm going to make a swoop. I'm still just using this little brush and swooping and going like that. And then I'm going to make another little swooping motion here, okay? So that's kind of cool. So already with all the layering of the paint, you can see like that there are translucent parts. Hello. Okay. And I'm going to pick another part and I'm going to just start to zigzag. So really I'm, I'm not doing a lot. Like these motions are very small. Like I'm gonna go into this. Actually, this is, I have too much paint. So you don't have to have too much paint for doing this. Like I actually would prefer you guys to kind of almost dry brush this part. So I'm just doing slow zigzag. And you know, it doesn't even matter if it's consistent how much paint you put down. Like how cool is that? Like I'm gonna do make this part just, I'm just gonna turn the tentacles over this way. Add a little bit of medium to move the paint. Yeah, so for those of you guys who have um, actually been doing acrylic paint before, have you guys used a lot of medium in what you work? Have you guys, like, or mostly have you guys been using water? Because uh, last week we talked a lot more. I think I even got some questions about the medium that I've been using. So if you guys have any questions about that, like, that's also really important. Like, if you guys, you guys can totally ask. <laughs> Okay, so there we have a little bit more of that and then I'm just going to fill, take a little bit, I want this part to be a little darker, so I'm just gonna go with my brush, and I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm gonna take my brush that has had that paint and just go right into the ultramarine and I'm gonna go here and just sort of add a little bit more. I'm just gonna fill in that space. I'm not gonna think about too much about the order too much. I'm gonna go in with a little bit and and already this is starting to look pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go take a little bit of this white mixture. So I'm mostly just using, honestly, I'm only using ultramarine and white. And I'm gonna pick out, I'm gonna start doing zigzags. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my medium and then just go over here and do a little bit more. Okay. And we're really gonna start adding, you know, in, in the end, we're really just gonna take a smaller brush and play with the details more. Okay, so. Snow Rhyme or Raisin, we're just sort of going in the same direction. And then when we add those tentacles, it's really gonna come to life. And I'm gonna go down here a little bit. 
So it's really not, this is actually not super technical. You know, you're just sort of playing around with how to layer like just a few colors. And also painting on a dark background is really, really yummy. You know, because if you just add something that's a little bit lighter than obviously than black, then everything kind of glows. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. And just play around with the space a little bit more. And then I wanna go, I wanna widen this part. I'm just gonna add a little bit of ultramarine here. Okay, how's everybody doing? For those of you guys who are actually painting with me, how's it going? Okay, a little bit more white. I'm going to add a little bit more white to this mixture and blot it. And I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go over some parts. Take a little bit of medium. And just kind of go over some parts. I might even want to switch to a smaller brush at some point. And you see, I kind of go back and forth between the mixture and the blue if I want it to be a little more translucent. And I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm not using a lot of paint at all. In fact, what I'm mostly doing is getting using medium or water to sort of make translucent layers. Okay. I'm going to go into the white. So that's also just looking pretty, pretty fun. Okay, there we go, adding little ridges there. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of this white. Um, do you prefer the gloss, Tr Trisha? Do you prefer the gloss or the matte? Like, what do you prefer to use? Because I've, I've never used the gloss. When I was first learning how to paint in acrylics, I went into an art store and I asked them whether or not there was a medium because I actually was trained as an oil painter. And of course, you kind of mix a lot of like different oils and varnish and all that stuff to make a, a medium. And I went into an art store to ask like, oh, do you guys have something that's similar? And they like pointed me to the stuff that I'm using right now. You know, I'm using like this golden uh, medium which is super helpful because uh, otherwise I kind of didn't really know. <laughs> I taught myself acrylic. Um, I was actually, I was trained as an oil painter. I'm still oil paint actually, um, but I was changing up my work and I decided to completely teach myself a new type of painting. And shockingly enough, they're not that related. Like there's a lot of things about using oils that is so completely different than using acrylics that I found myself have in a lot of ways, like kind of starting from square one. Okay, I'm gonna lighten this part, take a little bit of white. And so when I went to a store, I, I asked them, I asked the store people, the clerks, like what do I use? And they pointed me to a whole wall of them. And I have been using the same brand and the same type actually now for like five years, you know? And it's kind of amazing. Sometimes, you know, you think you know something like, oh, so I know acrylic, I know oil, so therefore I would be able to know acrylics. And actually sometimes that's, that's not true. I find actually the most challenging thing to be watercolors, you know, because you are, you're still layering with watercolors, but it seems to me a bit more like an unwieldy uh, kind of uh, material. Okay, so I'm gonna take the little bit more white and just sort of go over this. Okay, so let's go back and work on the top again. So I'm still using the same brush and I'm going to take the white and the ultramarine and mix up more of a batch, add some more white. So we're, this, this batch is gonna be even lighter. So I'm gonna go in there with a little bit of medium and then I'm just gonna start to lighten, lighten up our jellyfish. I wish I could tell whether or not, I don't really know if there is a gender differentiation for jellyfish actually otherwise I'd like want to call it a her instead of just calling it an it you know or her, uh, a her or a him or or that jellyfish so I'm taking some white mixing it with the ultramarine blotting my brush and I'm just going to start to uh, lighten lighten up the jellyfish so you can see I'm also using a lot of dry brush technique for this because I want to keep, I like really want it to look like a painting. 
I don't know if I really want it look to look like a photograph, right? So I'm just going to use some dry brush. Dry brush meaning I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And I am just sort of like doing that. So you can kind of almost see that it's not a lot of paint. And I'm just sort of scratching at the surface of the painting. Okay, so I'm just going to lighten it up some more. I'm going to use a little bit more medium. I'm just going to lighten, lighten, lighten. And I want to kind of, and you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I don't want it, I, it doesn't have to look like a total dome, right? I think I might even leave parts of it uh, light and dark. You know, I might, I don't want, I don't really want it to be a perfect little blue and white dome. So I'm still using the same brush and I'm just going to work this top over. So as I said, I'm not using a lot, I'm not using a lot of paint. Let's see. Oh, Trisha says she mostly uses the, the matte. Yeah, I prefer the matte. The one that I'm, are you using it right now for this class, Trisha? Because I've been using, I'm only really using the matte. Um, I don't know, I find glossy paintings a little bit scary. <laughs> because I don't know what's gonna happen to them when I, when I hang them up, whether or not it's gonna be too glossy and the light's gonna be too bright, you know? So I always prefer to use like the matte. Okay, and I'm going to just go this way with my brush. And already it's starting to look kind of cool. See, it doesn't take a lot to make this uh, a really cool painting because we're painting on a dark surface. And I'm just gonna dry brush, dry brush this way. I'm gonna take my Take the side of my, my paint, paint brush and just sort of emphasize. This might be the most efficient lesson I've ever given here. Okay, so I really am not using a lot of medium now because I really want to do bright dry brushing. I use I just want to like scratch at the surface with my paint. I want it to not be super wet. I want I want to be able to see that this almost kind of textured, you know? And not because like the jellyfish is super textured. I just think it looks prettier. And I'm just going to dry brush. So I'm basically not using a lot of medium right now. I'm just sort of going back into the paint because the paint's wet, right? So we can just use that to move everything. I'm going to outline this a little bit. There. Yeah, still only just using, you can add a little bit more white to this in the ultramarine. And you can kind of see that I kind of, as I'm mixing, I'm thinking about how light I want the paint to be. Like I'm not generally putting a straight white, I'm always mixing it back in. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna outline. And I wanna kinda leave this part darker, right? This part is gonna stay darker, and then I'm just gonna do some outline, so I'm gonna keep, always keep that. Always keep that part. Okay. There, I'm just gonna dry brush. Dry brushing a little bit. And taking the ultramarine. Dry brushing. Dry brushing, dry brushing. Part's a little dark. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that paint around. There. Go back into the white. And let it go. I still have paint on my brush, so I haven't cleaned my brush at all. Honestly, I don't really clean my brush here at all. So, you know. Hello, Sex. Sex the Artist, C-E-X. Um, you can watch this again, actually. So after we broadcast live, we you can see this and the whole video series, actually, like, on YouTube. So you can, you can just wait, or you can just watch it from here, you know.
Yeah, all of our videos are available after our live stream. So you can, so any of you guys who are just watching and want to paint later, you can do that. And then that means you can kind of toggle back and forth. I'm going to take a little bit more white and make this even lighter. And still, I have not cleaned my brush. I'm still just using the same. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to dry brush. I'm still just dry brushing on top. And already, look how, look how voluminous this thing looks, right? We're just still only using two colors. It's kind of amazing. Sometimes it's really fun to just play around with the limited palette. Because then you don't need a lot, right? Let's see. Do you guys uh, do a lot of paintings or drawings on dark paper? Like that's one of my favorite things is to draw and paint on dark paper. Actually, yeah, even painting on dark paper is really, really fun. Like I love to do a lot of like, I do a lot of actually art on different types of colored paper just because it's a little bit more, there's less work to do, you know? <laughs> like when the, when the background's already done for you, like, ah, I could just draw on it with like a, any, literally any color and it's gonna pop out. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, you're saying I need dark colors. Just got some oils waiting. Yeah, you could do this with, with oils, you know? Um, I mean, whatever you feel comfortable with, like you could do this class with, with I mean, this is an acrylic class, so very, but a lot of the things will translate, like especially the colors. But if you want to do this class, like really, I have four colors here. It's just white, ultramarine, Payne's gray and black. But even then you can just have like white, blue and black. And then you could be able to mix all these colors together. So yeah. Um, yeah, you, and in fact, if you don't have canvas as what you're saying, you can use like a really good um, piece of like drawing paper and you can also do this. So that will, you know, if you got, if you wanna, if you so choose to, to paint along with this class at some point, uh, you can totally do that. Like it really translates. Actually, we even have a few people who did this with watercolor, did some of my classes with watercolor and that was pretty great. Like somebody did uh, a, the space painting that happened uh, last week with watercolor and that was really cool. So I'm just going to go back into the acrylic and the white and start to lighten up this part, this bottom part of the jellyfish. I'm going to go back a little bit more, make this a little bit darker. And, oh, this got streaky. Go back into, I'm just going to go this way. Yeah, I know some of you guys are going to be painting a little bit slower. Um, I totally understand that, but that's why you guys can come back and like pause the video as you go. And, you know, I'm trying to fit within a, a frame so we're not working in this class for three hours. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add a little bit more color, a little bit more white. And, but it's kind of nice to just kind of hang out and watch because like that's how I learn. Like when I was a kid, um, I was a little bit slower with my learning, uh, but meaning that I would take, I would listen to the class, take notes, and then know that I can always go back to the notes. So right now it's kind of a great time. You're kind of, if you're just watching it, kind of take notes, kind of think about what you want to do. And um, especially now if before, you know, before the end of the class, if you have any like really important questions, to ask me, it's a really great time to, in case later when you're working on it, you kind of get stuck, you know? Okay, so I'm just going to go back. Oh, hello, from Turkey. Oh, I was in Turkey a few years ago. I love it there. It was pretty amazing. It was kind of a spectacular place. I wish I could go back right now. I remember the food and the people were super nice. And yeah, it was just so beautiful. When I was a kid, I had always wanted to go to the Hagia Sophia um, and there it was when I was there, when I was in Istanbul. And that was like my dream, actually. Like it was, uh, I had saw it in a, my art history book and I decided that it was where I was gonna go. And I did, and it was kind of uh, fantastic. 
like times like these, it's always really nice to think about traveling. We're about to get to go into to winter in New York City here. So I'm always thinking about where do I want to go and can I go anywhere, you know? Uh, <laughs> like obviously traveling is a little bit more difficult now, but usually in winter time I like to get away, go to California um, and think about what else I want to do, you know? Uh, but, you know, sometimes you got to stick around, even though New York City winters are can be pretty cold. <laughs> Oh, someone's here is asking where I'm streaming from. I'm streaming from New York City in, uh, in Upper Manhattan. And I've been here pretty much my whole life, actually. I grew up in, I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Queens. And now I've been living up in West Harlem for about 15 years. I have never been to Brazil. I wish I had. <laughs> Let's see. What time is it in Brazil? I'm just gonna go keep lightening it. So I'm just continuing to lighten it and I'm using the mixture of the ultramarine and the white and I'm still just dry brushing. I'm dry brushing with my flat one brush and I still haven't changed my brush. And what I kind of love about working with just a couple of colors, especially with the white and the ultramarine is that it kind of dries pretty quickly so I can just keep layering Keep layering, keep layering. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Ultra, a little bit of my medium, just to kind of move this white a little bit better. Okay, I wish I can show you guys. I'm keeping a little bit of the edge that's blue. Maybe you guys can see it. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that white and just make this a little bit lighter. There we go, I'm just dry brushing. Dry brushing, I'm not using a lot of paint, you know, I'm just dry brushing, taking a little bit more of this white. Let's see. Oh, I wish, guys, I wish I could go to New Zealand. That's my dream. There's a lot, I have a lot of dream places to go to right now. <laughs> I wanted to go to, I always wanted to go to New Zealand and Iceland. And um, I, yeah, I, I mean, these are all the, all the different places I dream about going right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just do, I'm going to emphasize that these are little folds here. And you guys can, you don't have to have it like really in any sort of order. But I'm just going to start taking the edge of my, my brush and just going like that. Or if you can't do straight lines like that, you can use a smaller brush. I'm just going to go there. I'm gonna make that a little bit lighter. Sometimes you use your finger to smooth things out. I know I do. I'm gonna take a little bit of this white, go back in with a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of white. I'm gonna do that. I'm going to even make this top even lighter by adding even more white and blotting my brush because there's too much paint and just using what's on there to dry brush to just sort of push the paint around to make that part look lighter. There, that's kind of cool. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave that for now, right? That feels a little bit better. How do you guys feel? Okay, I'm going to lighten up this part. Take a little bit more ultramarine. Oh, hello, Dan. It's good to see you there. I'm going to take a little bit more white. I'm going to... Okay. And there. So a lot of the top is, is almost complete. I'm going to go back in anyway, but for now... Let me make it... For now, I'm going to move on with you guys and go somewhere else. We're going to go back to the rest of the jellyfish. I'm just going to add a few more folds here. I'm going to dry brush a little bit more white down here. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool, right? We didn't use a lot of things. We're just gonna go over everything with the, we were just using two colors for that whole thing. And that was pretty awesome. So let's work on the bottom part. I'm going to, um, I'm 
this will work on, I think I might take a smaller brush. But if you guys don't have a smaller brush, it's okay too. I might just go in with a, um, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna be rotating between the little, this little flat one I have, right? And I have like a, a round brush. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white and mix it back into the ultramarine. So it's mostly gonna be white. It's gonna be a lot of white. And let's test that out, see if that's too white. Actually, that's pretty nice. And I'm not going to, I'm gonna try to keep this fairly dry and I'm going to, oh, I'm just gonna blot it some more. Um, and then we're going to, I'm gonna drag some of this and go like that. So I'm gonna pick out little areas where it would be really nice to sort of just show off a little bit of, you know, there, right? So we have little parts. We're gonna have little parts and I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna go like this. And already that's looking really, really, really good. Uh, and then I'm adding a little bit more white. So we're going to do that. And I'm still just using, I'm using this like round brush. I'm gonna go into, I'm just gonna rotate between my ultramarine and my white mixture and just sort of play. I'm still blot, sometimes I, I blot my brush in between because like maybe there's too much paint. So I'm doing that right now. Okay. That's looking really nice right now. This is like starting to really, really glow. So I'm just gonna keep going and add, pick out certain parts that need to be emphasized. And as I said, you guys can use a pointy round brush or not. And I'm just going to, this is almost sort of like a, like a gesture drawing, you know? Taking a little bit more of the ultramarine with the white and taking parts and just emphasizing them. Like in a lot of ways, I want you guys to use your, learn a little bit more of like using your instincts doing this because some parts you wanna leave light, some parts you wanna leave darker. And you can always go back with um, the ultramarine and black and like put in any gaps that you wanna, you wanna have left. Like maybe you filled in some of it too much. Like I probably will do that. And I'm just gonna go and start to We're going to add a little bit more white. I'm going to create little folds here. Look at that. It looks really awesome, right? It's nice and like glowy already. And we're not we didn't even really use a lot and we didn't even we haven't really even been working on this for very long. It's only been an hour, you know. And I'm going in a little bit more with the ultramarine just kind of fill this part in. Go back into my mixture, the white and blue mixture. And already this is looking really cool. If I do say so myself, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna go back into my white, make a mixture again, and add another little, little space there. Use a little bit of medium and just sort of move this paint around. And then I'm gonna start doing like the tentacles with you guys, like the rest of it, the ones that are like a little bit more, like not these, but the ones that are a little longer. Like in a lot of ways, this is very, very um, gestural. Like I want you guys to use your instinct and, and in a lot of ways, this is also about composition. Like which way are you gonna like emphasize? Which way are you gonna go? Like I wanna be working towards an S, you know? So I'm going to just, Use that mixture and go this way a little bit. And knowing that I'm eventually gonna put those long strands. Okay. I'm gonna take the white. I'm gonna take uh, just white, even though my brush is still dirty, has the blue. I'm gonna add some white and I'm going to start to use that to emphasize certain parts. So it just sort of, and I'm just gonna dry brush in some areas. But I want you guys to use the white with a little bit of the blue, but mostly white. And we're just gonna start to 
add these little folds and details. And already it's looking really dimensional. We're not really even doing a lot. Okay, go back in the blue and the white. Look how cool that is. Just adding, as we lighten it, it just, every time we lighten it, it becomes a little bit more magical. And I'm gonna add a little bit more here. And then I think we should do the base for the tentacles, right? We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna keep just lightening everything. As we lighten everything, everything just gets a little bit more, just poof, like just a beautiful, beautiful, magical 3D effect. So I'm gonna go and just do a little bit more, a little bit more, and I'm gonna take this white and dry brush that. And we're gonna do the, now the base for these tendrils, okay? I'm gonna take this, this is when I really suggest you taking out your your uh, round brush, okay? So this is not, I think this is, a, I don't know what number, this is like a number six, but it's pretty round. I mean, it's pretty pointy. So let's do the base for the base color for all of the, the tendrils. And I'm gonna take the ultramarine, mostly ultramarine, and add a little bit of white to it, just because it's gonna be, it'll be able to differentiate from the black background, okay? Okay, so let's see how that, that feels. That feels pretty good. So I'm just dotting out to see. So I'm going to, watch me, you know, I'm gonna do a little bit of an S, another little S, and then go this way. But you don't have to do it like that. As long as everything is sort of moving. Okay. So that's the base. So we're gonna be painting over that, but right now that's the base. And I'm going to add another one and make it move. And we're gonna overlap some of it. We can even overlap through some of the, the body. And it might help if you have a little bit of water to do this so the line doesn't get, inter doesn't get interrupted like I just did. So that's just the base. We're gonna paint over that. Um, and then we're gonna do another one. All right, and then we're gonna do more. We're going to, maybe I'll act, uh, mix a little bit of white in this. And we're gonna do one that goes this way. There's another one. And then we're gonna make, we're just gonna make a few more. And this is like, you can look at the photograph when you do this or you can just sort of, you know, eye it. I'm kind of eyeing it and looking at my photograph at the same time. I also have my, my sample painting, so I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. And I'm gonna take the ultramarine, add a little bit of white to it, and just I'm going to just continue to add the base for these little tendrils. And you can put as many or as little as you want. I'm just sort of, and I'm not making them, I don't wanna make them all like the evenly apart. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. So, I mean, whatever color I use for the base, that's all good, you know? And guys, if you wanna even do this with like a different color, like I bet this would be beautiful with purple, you know, and not blue, if you guys ever wanna do it again you know, or if you haven't done it yet, like using a different color would just completely change. Like even if you started off with like a dark orange and then put like yellows and whites over that, that would be really, really beautiful. Like I want this, this class is really about how to use a limited palette and still make something really, really beautiful. So I'm going to add just another one, just a few more, and then I'm going to lighten everything with you guys. Oh, that was too much paint. Uh, 
Yeah, wouldn't it be really funny, fun to imagine this with a lot of like other colors? You know, like a bright, uh, maybe like another like bright color behind it and then like adding white. Like that would be really amazing. Okay, I'm going to make another one. There. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to pick out some of these and we're going to, let's see, I just want to make everything. I think I made everything go, made the bottom part just a little bit too much, but that's okay. I wanted to keep that a little bit, but I didn't, but that's all right. I mean, I can change it. Maybe I can change it. I don't really like that too much. I think I'm gonna go back and go over some of what I did. I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray and just sort of color over some of it. Because I want it to be going this way, and I think I made this part too wide. And I'm just gonna go over some of what I did. <laughs> and we can because it's just Payne's Gray, you know? And I'm gonna go over some of that. And I'm just gonna go over some of that because I don't love it. I don't love the way it looks. Even though I painted this before, sometimes you're still kind of messing around with things as you go, right? Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm just gonna, I wanna keep, what I wanna do is I wanna taper taper this off a little bit so it looks like it's going this way. And I, by putting all of these tendrils here, I didn't feel like it was doing that enough for me. Like I wanted, I want it to be in sort of like a swooping direction. And by doing that, I just sort of lost my movement, you know? Oh yeah, if you did this in pink, it would be, it would be nuts. I would, it would, I would be amazed. And if you did it in pink, I want to see it. <laughs> now I want to do it in pink. I want to do this whole class again, but in pink. Um, I'm going to take the ultramarine and a little bit of this white, and I'm going to mostly use ultramarine and then sort of demarcate where I want to put it again and redo it. So I make sure I keep everything going that way. There we go. Feel a little bit better about the way that looks now. Uh, Okay. So now that's better. It feels more like it's going this way. In fact, I'm gonna do one more that literally goes that way. And I just made that part way too thick, but that's all right. I'm gonna go back and clean it up. I'm gonna go this way. So now it really feels like it's going in this swooping motion. Oh yeah, the beauty of acrylics is really that you can paint over everything really, really fast. So, I mean, given the fact that the background is just like a Payne's gray and a black, I, it doesn't really take a lot to clean it up. So I'm gonna go back and do the same thing. Like I made that line way too dark. So I'm just gonna go and clean, clean that part up and already it's better. Okay, so let's lighten that, this part together. Let's go back to our pointy brush. And I'm gonna go into the white into my ultramarine and white mixture and just lighten and lighten and lighten. And now we're gonna pick out some parts and I'm going to make this, I'm gonna go over the line that I made. I'm gonna go over it and there. We're not gonna go over all of them and we're gonna do that when we go over some of them, we're gonna do them in like different ways. So I'm gonna add a little bit more ultramarine to my brush, which is already wet and already has the white and blue mixture. And I'm gonna go and paint over this one. And let's see what happens. There. And look at that. So I wanna keep some of them not repainted because I want it to feel like the in and out, like, like the, the three dimensional, like there are some behind and there are some up front. So I'm gonna go back into the white and play play with that that's kind of cool I'm gonna go back into the ultramarine with my wet brush and pick out some areas and we're going to go back into some more of the white and then we're gonna pick another one and we're gonna go we're gonna go over it 
we're going to go over it with the we're going to go over what you already painted and make that part lighter and this is when having a steady hand is really helpful there and there's another one um oh someone wants me to make a pink one i will absolutely make a pink one and put it on the put it on the forum <laughs> if that's what you guys want to see i can make one with like a big fuchsia background and paint the whole thing in pink and i'll put it up on the page <laughs> Uh, on the show page and then that would be really funny um, okay so I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this part just a little bit lighter and go over it that would be really funny if we had a class where everything was just like really bright colors <laughs> and it would just be like a like a, a strange way of having this class um, ah, let's see I'll just find I love this class and use some ultra fine glamour dust. Oh yeah. Liz Miller says that she's been using some like glamour dust. Is that like glitter? Yes. If you guys, dude, make this glittery. Can you imagine? I I I want to see this. I want you to post it or you can you can you can message it to me. Like I want to see this painting done with glitter. <laughs> That would be so much fun. Okay, so I'm gonna pick another one and I'm gonna bring in I wish I had glitter. I wish I was putting glitter all over this <laughs> Wouldn't that be the craziest thing? I would love that. I want I want that in my life right now Okay, I'm gonna make this one really light by adding just more white um, Yeah, I want you guys so there is a place to post your work if not for those of you guys who are a little shy you can you can instant message me through my my Instagram too because I know some of you guys it's okay you don't have to you know be super super public about what you do you know if you just want to keep it for yourself totally okay but if you want to show me and show everybody who takes this class you got there's a link that you guys can follow on in the description where to post if not you can find me on on Instagram which is what a few of you guys have been actually doing so my Instagram is just my name dot a r t and that's super fine and easy you know sometimes I'd have uh, I teach some of these other online classes and sometimes people send me things during the class and I thought that was like really funny uh, okay so yes now we're all super excited about putting glitter on our paintings <laughs> I know I am I wish I wish I I just recently gave away all of my glitter stuff to my friend who has like a, a 10 year old and and so there's less glitter in this uh, in my art studio now but I'm but like there's a little girl out there who really loves the fact that she has glitter paint you know like we have dreams I want to I want to make kids dreams come true and like have glitter I'm gonna add a little bit more white and just sort of make this part just a little bit yeah I, jellyfish are super magical I mean glitter is just gonna make it a, a lot better and more awesome um, okay I'm gonna make this part a little bit lighter so I'm keeping some of it light. I'm also going to make some of it more blue. Just going to use more ultramarine and make maybe make this one a little bit bluer and sort of extend it out a little bit. Okay. There we go. There we go. Look at this, guys. We're almost done. Isn't that crazy? Look at this. In just over an hour, we've got something pretty nuts together. But uh, always, I want to make things a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go back in with my smaller flat brush. And how about we just sort of make this even, even lighter? Yeah? How about we do that? Like, that would be really great. Let's uh, take a little bit of the white and go back into that blue and white mixture. And I'm just going to dry brush the top, okay? So, and then I'm going to use that and just sort of push that around, not do too much. Like, sometimes I want to use my finger if I want to dry brush. And just sort of dryly put some texture up there. Believe it or not, we might actually be heading to the end, which is kind of nuts because usually my classes last quite longer but maybe this is one of those classes where it's a little bit more efficient. Um, let's see. I'm going to just make this part a little bit lighter. And 
add some white. And go. It's getting kind of awesome. So this part we're going to keep, you know, a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to do this a little bit. Maybe sometimes I use my finger to dry brush a little bit and take a little bit more white. Okay, and now it's really starting to glow, right? Isn't that awesome? It's kind of magical. We're only using a few colors. Look, I barely, honestly, I probably didn't even need to have you guys have like the paints gray. Like we barely used it. We could have just worked with three colors. Okay. And I'm just going to... Oh, someone here is asking me where I get all of my materials. Um, I get them everywhere, you know. I actually, um, there's a lot of beautiful local shops that are in New York City and obviously the bigger ones, you know, like, like Blick. Um, I, I mean, I'm a big, I really like, where I really like actually uh, getting work from local shops, like um, depending on where you are. I mean, I actually don't buy a lot of stuff online. I like to touch all of my art materials before I buy them. But I'm also, guys, I'm also really lucky. I live in New York City. I can actually walk. I know a lot of you guys don't live in a place where art supply shops are super close to you. You know, but if you have a chance, like you can, like ordering from a local shop is really, really nice. You know, but if not, there's always like the big stores like Blick, which are awesome, actually. And you guys, it's just like I prefer to touch all of my art materials before I buy them. I like to touch all my brushes. I like to, I, I mean, I don't squeeze the paint, but I like to look at the paint as opposed to looking at the swatches online, you know. So, um, I mean, I also go to a lot of craft shops to buy like my brushes sometimes because sometimes it's cheaper, uh, a little bit more, less uh, expensive and I'm gonna add a little bit more white see the more white I add the more bright it's gonna be you know so I'm gonna add a little bit a little bit more white and I'm just gonna keep adding white to this top yeah do do all of you guys like where so you guys are all from different places do you guys have like local shops that you guys like to go to you know like in New York, we have like, actually we have fewer now than we used to, but we have like probably at least in like five or six smaller stores in all of our boroughs. Plus we have the big shops like Blick, which I love, as I said, you know, I live up in Harlem and we have um, a really big Blick by us. And, but if I go up to, you know, honestly, they're, they're everywhere in New York city. Like, but we are a very artsy artsy type of like city, you know? But um, I know that for some people, it's harder to get things. So finding stuff online is also really great. But um, I really like using Utrecht paint, which is what I'm using here. And I love using Golden, which is, and I love using their mediums. And honestly, with brushes, I use whatever, you know, whatever I can find. So like if they're on sale or if they're a little cheaper, like sometimes buying a pack of craft brushes is really awesome because like you can kind of use your favorite brushes from there. You know, like I have actually a lot of my flat brushes are probably from like a giant pack of like of like craft brushes. I just like to buy the ones that are kind of soft, you know. Yeah, let's see. Um, so you're living in a small city in in Brazil. Let's see. Yeah, I know it's sometimes kind of like it's a funny thing, like when you're an artist, you really um, I like to be very tactile with what I do. You know, I like to touch everything, you know, I don't like to, and I'm, as I said, I'm really lucky that I live here and it's really easy for me to get things. But, uh, especially actually when everything was kind of closed down, I had to sort of, um, use my, <laughs> use my own experience and think about, okay, what number of brushes do I need? Which is also really good to kind of keep track of like the brushes that you really like and be able to find them again. Because I actually go, sometimes I go into these big art stores and they have like a clearance bin and I go and I touch everything and I go look at everything. And, um, and then sometimes the brand is gone on the brush and I can't figure out what it is anymore. So, you know, like that happens. Oh, so look at that. That's nice and bright now, right? And I'm leaving some patches because even the jellyfish, some parts are really translucent. Um, 
What city are you in Brazil? I've never been to Brazil, so I guess wherever you tell me it's going to be a bit difficult. But um, if you live in a small town in Brazil, is it easy to find art supplies? Um, oh, nice. What is London, Ontario like? I've only been to Canada once, and it was up in... Uh, yeah, I've never, I've never been that... Uh, I've never been there. I've only been to Canada once and it was in Manitoba and it was kind of amazing. Uh, I really love, I really love uh, our neighbors to the north. I actually did almost, the first time I almost went to Canada for the very first time, what was supposed to be my very first time about five years ago, we were up in Niagara Falls and I was with my friend and he didn't have his passport. So we couldn't, we couldn't, cro we couldn't cross over, but I waved from Canada from our side of the, of the, of, uh, of Niagara Falls. <laughs> and Niagara Falls is awesome. And that's to the North of New York city by like hours. Actually, it's very, obviously it's like, it's on the border of Canada. And Niagara Falls is like ma this like magical place with like a giant waterfall. Um, and I loved it there. I love that it wasn't even that expensive to be there. Ah, uh, dreams of traveling, guys. You know, all the things that I want to do. Yeah, so I'm just lightening up parts. So right now we're just lightening. We're just lightening things up. I'm going to go and add a little bit more of a mixture of the white and the ultramarine. And I'm just going to start lining up parts. But we're getting fairly close to finishing, I think. What do you guys think? How are you guys doing over there? Oh, you live close to Niagara Falls. Oh, yeah, New York City is amazing. I mean, we are pretty awesome, but I kind of thought Niagara Falls is pretty awesome, too. <laughs> you know, when you grow up in a city, you know, when you grow up in a big city like New York City, it's really easy to forget that there's like a whole world out there. And I didn't travel a lot when I was a kid. And now as an adult, like I travel as much as I can because honestly, New York City is Mars. Like we're, we're wonderful and amazing here, but we are like super different from the rest of the country. So when I leave and I, and I leave pretty often, um, I like remember how like beautiful the rest of the country is and how we're not all just like between like giant buildings, you know? Okay, so I'm just so right now we're we're in the end where we're just sort of building up our lights. How's everybody's painting going? I want to know. I wish I wish this was like a way that I can see you guys painting at the same time that we're doing this together. <laughs> yeah, I also I always think that like the independent shops for buying stuff is like really fun because they always seem to have like um, different things that you wouldn't have anywhere else. But like New York City, we actually have some brands that are directly from here that maybe um, other other companies also uh, sell. Like we have like Williamsburg Paint in Brooklyn, but I think Blick also sells Williamsburg Paint, but I really don't know. Um, and that's from like Brooklyn, Brooklyn, you know, like Williamsburg, Brooklyn, um, not Williamsburg, Virginia. <laughs> so I'm just lightening up, lighting up areas. Lighting up. I'm just taking this brush and just lightening up parts. Taking the. Oh, you're letting it dry, Elizabeth. Good, good, good point. Are you? What kind of paint are you using, Elizabeth? Like, what kind of paint are you guys generally using? Um, I think Williamsburg paint actually is owned now by Golden, but I'm not. I don't. Don't quote me on that. Actually, I think that they're like. Uh, not similar, but now they're like, I think one company owns the other, but that's a great paint. I, I use a lot of Williamsburg paint when I, when I do a lot of, uh, oil painting actually. Okay. So what do you guys think? Do you think it's going okay? You think we're almost done? I'm just sort of just dry brushing and like finishing up, finishing up these areas. What do you think? How's it going for you guys? Okay, I'm going to just, it's kind of nice now to kind of sit back and see where we are, where else we need to go, kind of hang out. I'm just going to hang out and let the paint rest for a sec before I make any decisions about completion. And what, do you, what else do you guys think I need to do to this? What do you think? Besides making it pink. 
Okay, I'm going to, actually I'm going to change this part up just a little bit. Just kind of make these parts a little bit wider. I might actually open up some of this by adding a little bit of black or some paints gray just to kind of open it up because I don't, I don't love how this feels very closed in. And actually I love it on camera, you can see it even more, like the difference. Oh, we're not painting anything in the background, not for this. Maybe another time, not for this one. Um, because the whole idea is that they are, it's kind of on a dark background, but if you want to paint something in the background, I want to see that. I want you to show me if you paint like a little fish that goes in the background and like our second class, we painted a fish. So if you want to paint a little, little fish that goes by, that would be really great. Um, oh, my friend here, Zippity Doo, is telling me to add some front tentacles, which she is correct. Thank you, my dear. Let's add... Let's add like a front tentacle. Oh, girl, you're so right. My friend, uh, my friend whose screen is uh, Zippity Doo. She has this amazing cat named Cat Department. So sometimes we like to call up Cat Department, you know, because we need to have some cat questions to be answered. But we're, okay, I'm gonna do, a few, I'm gonna do a few more front tentacles. So blue, white, uh, blue and white. I know one day we should, actually we're doing a cat next, the next class. So we don't have a class next week because it's a holiday. And so we're not coming back again until December 3rd, um, which is the, the Thursday following. And we're going to be painting a cat. No, we're not painting a cat. No, no, next week we're painting a uh, wood texture. The following week we're painting a cat. So sorry, sorry to psych any of you guys out. Um, oh, thank you so much, Karen. I'm so glad that you like this. I'm so happy. I hope you come back. So we come back obviously on a, because next week is a, is a holiday. So we come back in two weeks. And uh, so the next class we're gonna be painting wood texture. The following week is a cat. And then the eighth class, which might, might be uh, near the, is like the end of the season is going to be a chicken. So, okay, let's paint. I'm gonna take some white and some blue and I'm going to paint a front tentacle. So I'm gonna pick this one as the front tentacle and go this way. Awesome, that was fun. I'm gonna do that again, but a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. And I'm gonna paint uh, I'm going to take this and paint a front one. This is what happens when you think you're done. Somebody says, hey, you're not finished. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more front one with a white, with more white. You got to rely on your friends to tell you, you got to do more work, right? So I'm going to take a little bit more. Actually, this is the first time she's sitting for this class, so I'm really... Actually, are you actually doing this class? Are you actually sitting and painting this class? I'm asking my friend because, like, she's there. <laughs> We're going to do one more in the front. Uh, I'm going to clean up that one. I'm going to do one more in the front. Maybe not as dark, not as light. And I'm going to do this one right here. With this. There. Oh, that's a little, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit with some dark. I'm gonna make that bottom part a little bit darker. And lighten that up just a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah, you could totally do this with watercolor. This is only, in fact, if you have, um, I would even suggest that you would just do this with black and, I mean, honestly, it could be a little bit hard with watercolor. I guess you can kind of do it if you have like thick watercolor, you know, or you can do it like slow, if you have like 
a dark background. If you did this with watercolor, I would really suggest you doing it on like a dark paper, right? Get some dark paper and get some white and blue paint and just go at that. Like instead of um, painting your whole background dark, which I guess you didn't see at the beginning. So that would be my suggestion to you if you are going to paint this with watercolor. Um, like you don't like, it would actually be really nice. Actually, it would be really beautiful. I mean, I've actually never done watercolors on dark paper, but I would suggest that would be the best thing to do. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit more white and I'm just going to uh, add a little bit more here and maybe make this one, the front one a little bit lighter. All right, that's kind of cool. Okay, and maybe take a little bit. I'm going to make this part a little bit more dimensional. I'm going to just go back and use my flat brush and make this part just a little bit lighter. It's kind of nice. What do you think? Oh, are we finished? What do you think, guys? Do you think uh, we've uh, completed this painting? How are you guys doing? How many of you guys are actually finishing along with me? Okay, I'm gonna go back and just sort of go over a little bit more on the side. I keep thinking I'm finished, but then I wanna keep working on it, you know? Let's look at the beauty of this painting. Okay, I'm gonna go back and add, I'm just gonna clean up some of this. Like I don't love all of this. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this painting. I can't believe it. Sometimes you just don't know. Like even though you do a painting before, you don't always know if it's gonna come out right. I'm gonna open up parts of this with some dark. I'm just gonna open it up. Like I think some of this could be a lot nicer. What is the longest you guys have ever worked on a painting? Like sometimes I start a painting and then I give up on it and then I come back to it a year later and suddenly it's like a whole other painting, you know? Sometimes I, re I, I just paint over the whole thing. Okay, I'm gonna go back. Let's keep going back and just keep changing it a little bit more to make it look nicer. gonna go and make this part a little bit lighter. Okay. Just gonna touch it up just a little bit more. Wow, so you can see how some of them, the darker ones look like they're receding, right? And that's really, really cool. I think I want to add maybe one more. Just like one more over here. I mean, really, I can work on. I can really work on this forever. But I, I don't know if you guys want to sit and do this with me forever. Or maybe you do. That would be really funny. An endless art show. Okay. Go. <laughs> My friend is telling me I should uh, add two tiny eyeballs. We're not going to do that, but that's cool. <laughs> um, Margaret is saying, I once painted 12 hours straight. Wow, good for you. What were you painting, Margaret, that took like 12 hours? Sometimes I can't, I mean, guys, I have to sit here with you guys for two hours. Uh, because this is my job right now. I'm teaching, but I am a super ADD normally and I get up all the time I mean, there's a lot of snacking and napping and getting up all the time So I'm really impressed that you can be working 12 hours straight like that is amazing <laughs> Yeah, I want to know what you were painting for 12 hours straight like I hope it was like wouldn't it be really funny if you were working on something really 
like just like a square for 12 hours and then that would be a whole other whole other kind of story okay I'm gonna just do a little bit more white up here and I'm just gonna yeah that looks pretty I think it looks pretty good I think we're uh I think it's looking kind of nice okay Mm. Okay, now it's getting, it's gonna start looking too busy if I add too much more stuff to it. But I'm gonna keep making this part a little bit lighter. And emphasizing these folds a little bit more. I love that for a half hour I've been saying that I'm almost done <laughs> and I just want to keep working on it okay just gonna add a little bit more I'm still waiting for Margaret to tell me what she's what she worked on for 12 hours <laughs> I mean, I have to have a, I have to be really disciplined that day for me to be working a full, like straight day, you know. Um, sometimes it's like, I've really got to have like a deadline, or, you know, I don't really drink coffee, you know, it's just kind of work. Okay. Like my best day is when I can sit still for a full two hours, which even, but which is what I have to do here. <laughs> so I guess today is one of my best days where I have to like sit still. Uh, okay. Awesome. I'm going to do a little bit more. I kind of think we're, uh, we're kind of almost done here. No, I'm going to do it. As I said, as I said that like 20 minutes ago, I'm going to do... I say that to myself all the time when I'm painting. I'm like, I think I'm almost done. And then I sit, I sit for another like three days and try to finish. <laughs> okay. And a little bit. Yeah. And I really want to see what you guys do. So um, there's a link down below where you can share your work um, as well as the resources for this class. If you, you know, have just joining in and want to like see what we're doing. You know, uh, because like, and we're, and this show we do every, like for every Thursday, actually Thursday at three, 3 PM Eastern. So, and also you guys can catch our whole archive, uh, on YouTube. So far, this is like episode five and we're going to be having five episodes in this, uh, in this cycle. And yeah, obviously, and next week we're going to be paint, well, the next time you know, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be painting uh, some wood textures. If you guys want to learn a little bit about how to do that, I'm going to, okay, here we go. And yeah, there's going to be a link for you guys to share what you do for this class. And also, please don't be shy. If you guys just want to, like, if you don't want to be, uh, like, show your work publicly, it'd be really nice if you showed it to me. You can find me on social media and, like, send me a picture, which is what a lot of people have been doing, you know, because I know it's not always so great to, like, publicly show what you do let's see um so margaret says she was doing a large canvas with a friend oh it's great it was a special gift that's really lovely yes i mean 12 hours if you're working with someone it's so much nicer like honestly like i've done murals and stuff and working with someone makes everything a lot easier you know i've done some like pretty big murals and if i were doing it by myself and i have done murals by myself like it's just sort of it's a lot you know, like when you do paintings like that, you're just sort of constantly moving and it's exhausting. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit more. Go. Okay, so lovely. Wonderful. So I think I'm going to leave it here because right now I feel like I'm about to like overwork the whole thing forever. Uh, <laughs> um, so I hope you guys like like doing this painting together with me and I love it. Let's take a minute. Let's take a deep breath because we've been working. 
We've been working for almost two hours together. Or some of you guys have been sitting and watching me for a full two hours and it's like, ah, let's take a minute, enjoy the painting on the screen for just a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So I really hope you have enjoyed painting this jellyfish with me today. This was a super fun class. I loved getting to talk to you guys. You guys were super fun during this class because I had a lot of fun talking to you guys and making this painting. So um, we are taking next week off because it's a holiday. So our next class will be on December 3rd. Uh, and so it's in two weeks and we're gonna be painting some wood textures together. And I really hope that you guys go to the landing page and go to each individual episode and post what you do. If not, you can always find me on social media, you know, which is just my name, dot A-R-T. Um, and yeah, I really look forward to doing everything with you guys and just keep teaching for the next few weeks with you. I uh, hope you guys had a great time and I will see you guys really soon. Thank you.